Well, what time is it now? 7.53 in the morning and things have already started. So I've just gone out to get myself a coffee because my room was advertised with tea and coffee making facilities, but it doesn't have the tea and coffee making facilities. So I checked with the reception. They said, no, sir, if you bought a more expensive room, you would have had that, yeah. Well, why is it coded against the uh, room I'm staying in? I'm not sure, sir. Yeah, I think I am. Yeah, well, there's all sorts, isn't there? Lots of different food on the streets. First thing in the morning. This is nice, this coffee that they have. Call Cafe Boran Cup. Wrong Cup. Coconut Cup. There we go, make the coffee here. A little bit of that. A little bit of hot water. Um, one nit no, eh? Copo no cup. She asked me if I wanted it sweet. I said just a little. She put a little bit of sweet condensed milk in it and then some regular milk and top it up with a bit of hot water and coffee and away we go. Oh, copo no cup. Copo no cup. Thank you. That was uh, 20 baht. I can remember when these things were 8 baht. But yeah, that's a nice cup of coffee. Mm. It's really rich in flavour, it's delicious taste, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I love it. I love uh, the coffee, except it's got a lot of sugar in it, right? So, when I say a lot of sugar, when they put that sweet and condensed milk in it, it can be very sugary. But they were just looking at me then saying, why is this guy talking to himself? Yeah, well, it's... They haven't seen the camera. They've not. They've seen it now. So this is a pretty popular strip here. And when I just walked past that lady sweeping up there, I covered my cup because you don't want any of that rubbish going into your cup. McDonald's is very famous here on this strip. Very good meeting place. There's lots of meeting going on here. So where am, I, where am I now? Well, this train station here is called Nana. And Nana train station sort of represents what this area is known as. It's known as Nana in Sukhumvit. Come on, mate. I love walking up and down here and having a look around and you know there's always something happening. And I can walk up to the BTS system up here, takes you to the overhead train system which they call Rot Fa. 
as a uh, train in the sky, right? Or something of that nature. Traffic's an absolute nightmare at the moment. It is gridlocked and it goes back as far as you can see. So you wouldn't want to be driving a car here. I mean, it gets pretty bad in the Philippines too. But at least here, the, the, the roads are a bit wider, but hey, the driving practices don't get any better. The only thing I like about driving in Thailand is that you're driving on the left-hand side of the road. There's a famous Hooters in front of me. Nana Hotel. This particular area in front of Nana Hotel is a real hot spot for action. I've seen the police come in here when I've been over at that bar over there, which is a great people watching location because you can sit on the balcony and this bar over here, which is the same, although it's covered with umbrellas. So any of these bars around here are really cool people watching locations. Now, as I was saying, I've been sitting over here watching the action happening in front of me, and I've seen the police come in at one side of the street and then another side of the street, and they come in from the back as well, and they block off this whole area really silently and quietly. You never would know that they're actually moving in. And I was watching this and I was, and I was quite um, interested, what is going on here? What, 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 are, what are all these cops um, popping up? And then all of a sudden you see the looks on the faces of the people standing in front of here doing what they shouldn't be doing. And they decide, oh no, we're gonna make a run for it. And they take two or three steps in one direction and the cop puts their hand on, no, you're not going anywhere, come this way and they start herding them up like um, like animals, right? And they're herding them up. And then just around the corner there, they've got the van and they just put them all on the van and cart them away, right? So there is uh, different times where that happens and they do a round up. No thanks, mate, no thanks. Uh, they do a different time, oh, sorry, I'll get back to what I was saying. At different times, they do a round up of people and take them away and process them. I don't know what they do when they process them, but yeah, it's safe to say you can't loiter in that area. 
dressed up, looking very attractive, uh, I think. Right. Prices for massages are quite reasonable, 350 an hour for original Thai, 300 an hour for foot massage, that's good. But most of these massage places down here, given the area, I think specialise in, 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 in massage of a different type. So you can see the bars here. So now this place here is called Hillary's 2. Now over in the distance over there is Hillary's 1. Uh, that way, yeah, that way. Hillary's 2 is an excellent party place. Uh, the bands they have on here are sensational. And it is, it is a place where you can go and uh, find some action. However, if you're into good music, dancing, that type, you know, live music, they always put on a great show there. And it's one of my, one of my stops when I come here to Bangkok. So this is Nana Soy 4, or Sukhumvit Soy 4. Some people can't get enough booze uh, first thing in the morning. Morning. Morning, morning. So we're looking at 8.25. Massage shops are doing their thing. Morning, miss. Good morning, miss. How are you? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, she's blowing kisses at me. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's nice. That's nice of her, isn't it, eh? First thing in the morning, blowing kisses at you. I've just had a coffee. I haven't brushed my teeth, so... Yeah. <laughs> I was going to crack another joke, but I thought, oh, I'll leave that one away. Yeah. So still walking down, soy four, no no, this guy's getting an eyeful, he's talking to himself too. These guys are also getting an eyeful. Yeah. I couldn't even tell you. Thank you. Look into your eyes. Right, it's a long way down this soy, so if you end up choosing the hotel down the end there, which I have stayed at before, uh, you'll be in for a long walk, particularly at the end of the night when you're fully tanked up. So you might want to consider taking a taxi or a, or a motorcycle, of course. Around here they take motorcycles as the most efficient form of transport. Hello. Hello. 
<laughs> oh, I'm waiting for you a long time. I see you, but you never see me. Well, thank you, thank you, ma'am, for seeing me. It's nice to be noticed, you know. It's pretty hard. Hello, miss. Hello, miss. No, I'm good, thank you. I'm good. As I was saying, it's nice to be noticed. Uh, it's pretty hard not to be noticed when you're walking around as a foreigner with money. Now, this money exchanger here, it's known as Vasu Exchange. Now, they do a really good rate here. So you can find them on Soy 7 1 off Nana, right? Sorry, off Sukhumvit. Now, this area here is famous for extracurricular activity. And you can walk down here. You can walk down here and find some extracurricular activity later on at you know, evening, night time, if that's your thing, right? At the moment, I'm just doing a, a walkthrough to show how quiet it is. So it's... Morning, ma'am. It's a nice lady, just morning. That's all you really need. As a tourist, you don't need any hassles. You just need people to treat you friendly and you know, you'll treat them back the same way. A couple of hotels here, check-in. Pretty uh, famous hotel for being located right amongst where the action is and this particular one at the end here Maxim's Inn and then kind of that's where it ends right so not much more to say about that but it's beautiful and cool in the morning when you're walking around it's a great way to get around first thing in the morning and just you know, get your steps up if you're doing some exercise, but also have a look around and orientate yourself to these areas before you get out at night time and try and figure out which way you're going and what, what you're doing, right? Because you don't want to be running around through these areas trying to find a way out when you're walking into dead end lanes like I just did, right? There's only one way in and out of this particular lane. So that's what you gotta know. Next thing you know where the ATMs are, the banks, that is, uh, the, the hotels. You know where all of those things are, then you'll be in a better place. If you're in trouble, you could always run into a hotel, right? So help me, you know, call the police. Now, people are less likely to run into a hotel after you when there's hotel security. If you're if you're in trouble and they're sort of wound up and they want to punch the shit out of you, well, they uh, they're less likely to run into a hotel after you, thinking that you actually live there in that hotel. There's a charging port on that corner back there where that lady was sitting down charging her phone saying hello to me. She seemed very, very, very friendly. And, uh, oh gee, look at this. We've got a tour. Wow. I've never seen that before. That's interesting. Well, I just walked past some things that I can't display on YouTube, so I'll have to blur that out. YouTube will lock me down if I can't, if I display stuff like that. They'll tell me I'm a naughty boy and tell me if I do it again, I'll shut my channel down. So 
Got to be really careful with YouTube these days. It tries to be family friendly, right? So the way people get around YouTube censorship is to just create these um, portals or locations within their YouTube page that they sell to members, right? And they say to you, um, buy a membership and we'll give you access to exclusive content. Now, that's the only way they can prevent YouTube from censoring their content, right? So when I say censoring content, what usually happens is when you upload content to YouTube, YouTube has a sophisticated algorithm that looks at the video, looks at the words you use, etc., and then decides whether or not that information or presentation violates violates any of their community codes of practice, right? So, you know, if you're talking anything to do with anything dark, the dark side, that's all we say. So if I use those words, I get censored, right? So it will highlight that video as being a non-monetarized video, right? So the content creator will not be able to earn any revenue for that video. Now, the revenue content creators earn is bugger all anyway, right? Someone like me, I earn nothing, right? Because I don't have that many subscribers. But some of these fellows that have 30,000 subscribers, they, they, you know, they're earning good money, uh, so to speak, right? Now, that video, as I say, will be flagged as non-monetarized, which means that the advertisers will not be assigned to that video. So the way that kind of plays out in, in common language is that YouTube have decided that there are certain advertisers out there that feel that they don't want to be associated with smut content or anything dangerous or anything like that, right? So they have indicated that in their advertising profile to YouTube and then they've left it up to YouTube to decide what that content looks like. So YouTube have set up a series of checks to say, you know, if it's this, if it's that, if it's this, if it's that. Now, as a content creator, you have the option of telling them that it is this or that and then they'll not monetize it anyway, right? So. If you don't do that, as I say, the algorithm will look at it and say, nah, that's not good enough. So there won't be any advertising content. Now, if there's no advertising content, then the content creator, person uploading the video, of course, does not get any money. Now, that changes when you've got somebody that is a premium YouTube subscriber such as myself, I bought a YouTube membership. I sort of support YouTube because I use it a lot. I watch a lot of videos and documentaries and whatever on it. So if a premium YouTube subscriber watches your channel, then you get rewarded for that because YouTube realizes that their premium subscribers who are who are you know, a legitimate form of revenue actually want to see that content. So if you're one of my subscribers and you're a premium member with YouTube or you're not a subscriber and you're a premium member and you watch, well, thank you for supporting me and YouTube because um, I, get, I get a credit for that, right? I get recognized as providing content that people want to see. Now, so the other side of the coin is trying to avoid being uh, highlighted or told by YouTube that you know, your content is not suitable is really difficult, right? That algorithm is red hot and it will pick up just about anything. So there's been a lot of tricks that people try and play by, you know, they, 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 they immerse the content into other 
content, you know, pretend it's something when it's something else, that type of thing. But if you show certain things on YouTube and it's very, very clear about uh, identifying your practices, you show those certain things, it's going to see it and uh, it's going to give you a community standards violation and, well, not a community standards violation. It's going to identify it as a via potential conflict with their community standards and it's going to err on the safe side and it's going to say, nah, not suitable for our advertisers. Okay, so enough with that. Let's move on and see what else is around here. So, I guess the question remains, if people are not getting rewarded for this kind of content, why would they upload it? You know, like, there's a lot of risk. There's a lot of risk with uploading content. Well, noisy, noisy. So there's a lot of risk with uploading content, and the risk really is that one, you know, you risk YouTube telling you that, you know, hey, we've looked at a whole heap of your content and, you know, we don't think you're fit for YouTube anymore and they could boot you off, right? The other thing is, whilst you're filming that content, you could get challenged by the people you're filming. They could say, hey, what are you doing filming me? I'm, I'm undertaking activities that are considered, you know, against community standards. So, you know, moral standards or whatever, right? And so they may they may even attack you, which I've seen, right? Or I've heard of, and I've, I've seen a guy beat up in Koh Samui, right? Uh, uh, for just that, for that very thing, yeah? So, um, there's a lot of risk associated with it. So back to the question, why would you do it? Well, I guess it really depends on what you're trying to achieve with your channel. And for me, I'm trying to provide helpful information and tips, which is why it's called HITS, uh, on a range of topics that I know people would be interested in, right? Now, usually they are topics that I can't find myself, or people have recommended to me on the channel, oh, could you do something on this, something on that? So, so I do that for that, uh, because ideally, if you've got one person um, asking for it, there's bound to be, you know, a, a heap of other people that want it as well, right? So I usually use that as a good indicator that I've got a topic of interest. And the other thing that's kind of related to what I've already said is entertainment, right? So I, I, there is no doubt that we are all, well, I can't say all, but most people like to be whisked away and entertained by you know content that's interesting or funny or provocative or challenging or whatever right so we we like to be stimulated as humans so so i i try to do that yeah in a number of ways and and uh my channel i hope does that for people i've had feedback some saying you know hey you, you, you crossed the line you shouldn't do that Others saying, uh, that was great, uh, loved it, uh, keep it up. You know, I even had one guy, <coughs> excuse me. I even had one guy say to me, oh, you know, show me more laundry videos, mate. I love those laundry videos, yeah? And yeah, you know, so there's, there's, there's a few comics out there too, and I and I love them. I love the, the guys that have got that humor like I have and, and you know, share it in their, share it in their notes. And it's, it's funny, right? Yeah. So we can all have a bit of fun and enjoy ourselves whilst we're doing this. So I guess, uh, what am I doing this morning? As I said earlier, just having a walk around. First thing in the morning, having a look around and seeing what's happening. Uh, I like to get out early in the morning because it gives you a different perspective. I did try to walk into Nana Plaza earlier on and I was told that no, I can't come in there with a camera. So 
that's a no-go zone. So any videos you see online by any content creators that have got the internals of Nana Plaza, they've actually violated their conditions of entry into Nana Plaza. And you know, that's significant. That's significant in places like this. You know, why is that significant? Because you're often pretty well known. You know, I, I wear my hat around the place and people know who I am. You know, and they say, oh, that's that, that's that guy from YouTube. And if I've done something wrong, they might walk up to me and say, hey, mate, you've done this and you've done that. Now, there's that, that sticker from TK. I've seen that over in the Philippines as well. So uh, that fellow or, or girl or whoever he is, uh, well done, mate. Uh, I've just seen you here and uh, I like it. I like it. Nice, uh, nice sticker. I don't know what it is, but... Uh, you're being noticed.